Hey everyone, it's, I'm Wendy Reed. I'm the Assistant Athletic Director for Communications at Calumet College of St. Joseph. I'm here today with our men's bowling coach, Coach Kubacki, um, a former player, alumni of the college, Ryan Albertson, and our Director of Admissions and former Athletic uh, Sports Information, Andy Marks. Um, we're going to shit, sit down and chat a little bit about um, where Ryan is now, his experience when he was here, and reminisce a little bit about when he and Mike took the team to um, a national runner-up finish in 2010. So. Ten years Excellent. ago, man. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, and that's and that's kind of where uh, this all started for me was getting the prompt on Facebook, um, getting that reminder, and. Uh, um, you know, and I'm just so glad that we're getting this opportunity today with Ryan because Ryan was significant. He was, uh, he was one of the original members uh, in the very first year. Um, he was significant from the standpoint of um, he was a dual sport athlete as well. Um, you know, I, originally I thought he was coming in for golf and, and I'm not 100% sure on how our connection happened because I remember, because I was a high school coach before I was a college coach, and I remember competing against him because he was at Crown Point High School, and they had a pretty good team. And, uh, you know, and I remember his fire. That, that was the main thing I remember from high school was his fire. And, uh, um, but, and I didn't remember his game that much. Because it wasn't that good. Well, it, it, was, it was a challenge. It was a challenge, but, uh, but he was always fourth or fifth in the lineup for Crown Point, which is a strong sign that he's one of the better players, you know? So that, that's what I did remember. Um, what I ended up with uh, was just so, so, so much different than what I ever expected. Um, because just like he made me make sure I was on time today, which for those that know me know that I tend to be a little coach late, um, uh, that's who he was at our practice sessions. That's who he was all throughout his career. He was almost always the first one on the lanes in practice. Um, and just like he makes the little joke about his game, um, I wish I was the coach then than I am now. Because I always think back to some of the things that we had to work through in his game. And I, and I always go, man, with what I've learned now, I think I could have helped him a little bit more. Um, but... Uh, uh, but we worked really hard together on it. And he, he definitely battled through it. Um, and that's why, and I, Ryan, I don't know if you've had a chance to hear some of the comments in the other uh, presentation we did. Um, I talked a little bit about how you just kept trying to find your way, find your way, but you would just grind out the spares. And mm -hmm. at the end of the game, you just keep going. You know, Even and, tried two-handed. Yeah, yeah, well, and- uh, but, What a bad experiment. <laughs> yeah. um well that was after college all right you didn't try that while you're in uh maybe for like uh three practices to begin yeah. like a year or something and then that went uh bye bye <laughs> well like, that's because he was you know because uh what year was matt was matt the same year as you or uh, he was one year behind but he probably didn't start two-handed till that same year almost yeah because it was uh matt's second year that um that i converted him to a two-hander so Mm -hmm. um so yeah there definitely uh with some of the challenges ryan had uh him two handing at this point probably <laughs> would have yeah it probably would have worked at times you know would have hurt um, my spare game but uh definitely would have hurt your spare game um but you know really what i remember though uh with ryan was he was just a player that his effort was unparalleled his frustration level was also unparalleled a little but less now did, you know but but he did but even though like you know a lot of coaches talk about you want players that uh show attitude and a lot of coaches shy away from them and i actually vegetate towards players that have feistiness i vegetate you know because um i think in in ryan's cases i'd say 95 percent of the time he handled it the right way I mean, there was certainly a moment here and there, which is to be expected uh, with a young athlete, um, you know, but, but it was never, it was never so bad. I don't, I don't remember. I think Sammy was worse than me. Yeah. Well, yeah there, there's, <laughs> there, 
yeah, there's no doubt. <laughs> um, but, uh, but you know, I was the feisty player myself back in the day. Yeah. So, and, uh, um, so I think I just connect with those type of players more because I also understand that part of that uh, feistiness is just a desire, you know, and a want. And, and that's part of what a great athlete really needs. And, you know, um, you know, Ryan, Ryan, I don't think Ryan ever came out of the gates um, like he looked like he was going to be on the first team. But boy, did nobody work their way onto it the way he did. I mean, because you, you'll have to remind me, Ryan, in, the, in your first year, um, were you already on the first team in that first year? Uh, yeah, it was, it was more of a, you know, backup role, the six, seven, eight, and shoot the spares. But, I mean, most of the time I ended up bowling because you'd have some of the guys uh, missing spares and then you wouldn't be too happy. So then I'd get, I'd get in there. But, <laughs> you know, then by senior year, I was like, take me out. I can't strike. All I can do is make spares. You like what you're saying because you can make spares. So, you know, <laughs> transition happens. So, but, yeah, I was never as good as I ever wanted to be. But, you know, the the time I had in the four years with all the guys was something I'll never forget. As much fun as you know we could ever have. So, and then I was thinking back to El Paso with, you know, my my mom and my aunt coming, and then you know the locks there, and then you know Andy showing up to all the tournaments too. So, you know, we definitely had a, a following with us too, even all the way to El Paso. So, definitely made things even better for that. So, yeah, I think uh, you know. Ryan was in the very first year, mm -hmm. you know, and we had a, we had a hodgepodge of 16 guys that were, um, I knew we were going to be talented though, because we did a scrimmage at Purdue Lafayette and Scott Savage had a pretty good program there. And uh, we bowled in their student union and they broke up into three teams and we broke up into three teams and we ran a little six team scrim scrimmage. And, uh, our top two teams finished first and second that day. And Scott Savage looked at me and goes, what did you do? And, you know, uh, so um, I knew we had something when, uh, when we went to Purdue, because I knew Purdue, Purdue wasn't a great team, but they were a good team. And uh, we definitely shocked them a little bit. And uh, I don't think they were, they were not expecting that because our guys, I think they were just, you know, that's a scrimmage, go through it, you know, and our guys were like, they were going there to win. And so it was, uh, uh, it was definitely eye opening, I think for Scott, who'd already been around college bowling a little bit, but it was also eye opening for me to know that, okay, we've got some talent here. Now we got to figure out what to do with it. And uh, so, I mean, and Ryan was, Ryan was huge all the way through. I mean, there's no doubt about it because what year did you become a captain? Probably junior, I imagine. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know Mike, it's, uh, it, it's interesting you talk about that first year. You know, that, that first year was, was interesting for, for everybody coming across there. Uh, that 06 07 season was, you know, your guys' is first. And, you know, men's basketball is winning that conference championship at the time. And, you know, you guys were the relatively unknown people in the school. You know, you were a first year coach, first year guy. Yeah. And all of a sudden, basketball ends and you guys are headed to that national tournament. Um, and we remember just sitting in the office watching this all play out and the stats come up on the screen and the guys doing different stuff. And, you know, Peter and I, the former AD, looked at each other and said, you know, we're, we're in for a ride here. You know, yeah. we're in for an absolute ride. And then all these young guys come back and we're like, you know, there's something special happening. Mm -hmm. You know, in that you went with us, didn't you? That was the only time I, I never went was that very Say the long year. bus ride to Wichita. <laughs> yeah, it was the only time I didn't go. Uh, Cause we didn't know what to expect. You know, we didn't, we didn't know truly what, what this bowling thing was all about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and Ryan, you will you're going to have to help me here. Um, in sectionals that year, did you guys rally in that year? That's when we lost uh whitewater, I think uh, uh, twice did we finish? somehow. Well, no, no, no. I'm talking about sectionals when to, to oh, okay. get to, to get to nationals. Uh, well, I, know. I know two out of those first four years, these guys were cardiac kids. I mean, these guys came out of nowhere. These guys. For some reason, I think our first year we might have had it easy, and then maybe it was the second year that was real tough. Yeah. And I, I actually think 
the third year is when we won, and then the fourth year is when we, you know, had a good, like, last block to make it in there, so. Yeah, yeah, 2008, we won sectionals, that, that I remember, and, uh, um, but, uh, you know, what's really, it's really interesting now looking back over what the game is now versus what the game was back then. Oh, yeah. Um, the kind of players we have now versus, you know, one of the comments that I made was uh, we've talked about um, the 10 years ago team, how they would match up to the teams of today, you know. And, and Sammy obviously is the one who really has a great perspective there. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we talked a lot about how that 2010 team um, made the commitment that year to being the best bear shooting team in college. I feel like, you know, I couldn't really remember the other day, but if I was picking somebody, I would have picked you as being the one who brought that thought process up. And that's why I've tried so hard to get Grinder into these calls. Um, but I'm curious how you remember the team reaching that decision to become the best bear shooting team that year. Well, I mean, I really think it's just me, Danny, Grinder, and Sammy saw it for, you know, so many years and so many tournaments because we went to every single tournament and saw the importance of spares. So, you know, especially the four of us. And, I mean, you could probably attest we were probably the four best spare shooters too. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, the others, you know, tried to follow and, and get on that same board. But, mm -hmm. I mean uh, – I mean, Danny and I would go to tournaments when we were in freshman and sophomore year just because of shooting spares on those Baker matches, too. You know, mm -hmm. people throw a strike ball, we come in throw the spare ball, you know. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I still wish we had a seven-game series versus Wichita on TV there. But, you know, it's – once again, we're going against the best team probably ever in uh, college bowling history, too, with, what, three years' experience on TV already? So, oh, yeah. Yeah, that was know. our third year in a row of winning. <laughs> so. You know, I'll tell you, I didn't throw the ball like I wanted to until probably the third or fourth shot on TV. So needed some time to get acclimated to being the most nervous you could ever be in your life. So, you know. Yeah. So when we had no. the pro team on, they um, seemed to think that you were instrumental in a lot of push-ups happening because of this wanting to be the best spare shooting team in the world. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, or planks. I remember planks, too. We'd uh, plank for a minute or two. <laughs> Yeah, and I think, you know, th th that was one of the things that was definitely brought up is that you and Grinder uh, really enforced some of the punishments in practice, some of the – I don't like to use the word punishment uh, – some of the disciplines in practice for missing spares and so forth. And, you know, and one of the things that that group had – you guys also had Toby. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, looking back on great spare shooters, um, Toby was a sophomore in that group, but he was – a really strong player and a really good spare shooter too. Yeah. You know, so yeah, between the five of you, um, definitely uh, some really strong spare shooting. And, mm -hmm. and not, not a surprise. I mean, not a surprise that when it comes to winning matches, uh, those spares are everything. I mean, um, you know, I, then, I, will, I will, you know, What's that? Dwight Horn and I then both, you know, had so much fun the four years. We came back to assistant coach then fit the fifth year then, too. But uh, I think we instilled probably more uh, planks and stuff then when we <laughs> yeah. were the players. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. I forget uh, how long you guys did stick around afterwards. So how many years I mean, did you do it? No, nah, he was around more because, I mean, I yeah. probably was able to make it to five or six tournaments and maybe half the practices just because of, mm -hmm. you know, working at the dealership already. But, I mean, heck, I worked at the dealership senior year that year, too, because you don't mm -hmm. remember, I tried to tell you that I was just going to be the manager after trials. Of senior <laughs> yeah, I know. Year I because know. I was, like, I was like ninth in, uh, ninth in the trials, and then you guys went to Wauwatosa and we're bad so you're like nope you're coming to the tournaments now and then I had my best year so you know well you that's all story, all, we, we all remember you trying to do that because you know after you did that you know Mike for a week straight was can you believe this kid can you believe him his <laughs> senior year <laughs> telling me he's not gonna bowl well, you know it, it, it's so hard on the seniors in that preseason trial and they know it's their last year and what's really interesting about this year um, is Manny Sanchez went through the exact same thing that you went through. Um, he was right on the bubble. 
and didn't make the the roster for the first tournament. And just like you did, Manny ended up, now you had an even better year, but Manny actually ended up having one of his better years this year as well. And, uh, and it was because of what happened with Ryan that I didn't overreact to what was happening with Manny. Um, mm -hmm. You know, because I know how hard it is um, for them when they've been successful in their career. Um, but what's really interesting in Ryan's case is that he's usually the first person to pull himself away when he's not good enough. And, you know, and that is, it's so easy to coach a player like that. You know, it really is. And, you know, um, even though, you know, there were certainly times where, you know, Ryan would be going through his frustration and, and I'm trying to still get thoughts into him. And, uh, and we would certainly have to work through that. But again, I would just much, much, much rather have a player that is about being the best version of himself. And if he can't be the best version of himself in that moment, he wants somebody from the team to be able to be that person. And, uh, you know, that first half of his senior year, he was really mucking around, you know. It was like it was rough, rough, rough. But, boy, second half of that year, I mean, you threw the ball as best you've ever thrown. I mean, you mm -hmm. struck you struck a lot. And that's what I remember. You struck a lot. And then he well, went, I, uh, you I know, back, the pressure was back, off. back. What's that? The pressure was off because I already knew – I wasn't going to be the bowler I wanted to be in the end, you know, an All-American, yeah. this or that. So, you know, just more free that, hey, I am what I am. I got my teammates, you know, let's win some mm -hmm. tournaments. And I'm, uh, I'm here for all the support. And, you know, obviously the cheering on, you know, I was definitely mm -hmm. uh, one of the leaders and uh, having fun on the lanes too when it comes to that. So, No, definitely. And, and what's really interesting is the minute he got into that mindset, he went back-to-back all-tournament teams. You know, that's what I remember. I remember and 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 actually ended up being uh, the school's, uh, I believe, senior male athlete of the year, right? Yep. A little bit yeah. of golf help there, too. So, yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, because, you know, uh, I think is it is it fair to say that you were the best golfer on the golf team? Uh, <laughs> well, there wasn't a, a full team all the time. But, yeah, I would say when I was there, that was the case. But. You know, I think actually the year after I left, they actually got some pretty good players there that would have uh, definitely uh, put me to shame possibly then. But yeah. um, I had a couple of good turns. More, well, I'll answer that a little more direct for you, Mike. Yes, he was the best golfer on the team. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't really yeah. want to say it. So hey, yeah. I've, no, I know. <laughs> I've got two and, uh, golf MVP trophies still somewhere in my room. <laughs> I know that. So. I don't have a – yeah. I, I, And what's I interesting could, – I could never – could never say that for bowling, that's for sure. Glad well, and Sammy had that all day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, I mean, it, I, I've seen Ryan's golf swing, and what's interesting, my bowling swing's pretty good. My golf swing's awful. Yeah. Ryan's golf golf swing is phenomenal, and his bowling swing at times has been a little rough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, still is. <laughs> uh, you know. Um, so, so hey, Mike, uh, Ryan, maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll spark some laughs here with you guys. So you guys have talked a lot about the physical aspects of the lane and the physical aspects of what you guys did and doing planks and sparing and so on. Talk a little bit about the personality and, and the emotional dynamic between everybody on the team, because I, I think that sometimes gets lost in, in the success and you don't see some of that background. Well, oh, God, we could talk for days on that. I, I mean, <laughs> I think and I think that. Uh, you know, there are, there are two personalities. There is the personality that the team and each of them show me. And then there's the personality that takes place amongst them. And, and Ryan, what you, you don't know is in the other conversation. And one of the things that I had asked Grinder when he left the program was, what did he do so well as a captain? Because obviously, uh, with the maturity the, that he brought in and just mm -hmm. the, the way he was, um, you know, one of the things that – one of the most important things he said to me was that when the guys came and complained about me to him, and he said – and they did a lot, he said I would turn them around and I would say, why don't you try listening to him? He really knows what he's talking about. You know, so um, – because I think Grinder had to do that early in his career. You know, um, those first – I mean, those – 
you know, you know, Ryan now, and you haven't made fun of me quite as much as some of the others, but they always make fun of how soft I am now compared to what I was back in those days. And well, the first year especially was wild and crazy with a bunch of characters. I mean, Oh yeah. I mean, all we, over had, the place. we had characters too. I mean, I mean, characters oh. and, uh, we definitely had some uh, one and dunners and because uh, what year did Coleman and Sfilar and Scholl and yeah. Atlantic and oh mm-hmm. man. Well, yeah, <laughs> Justin Lesser in there too. I mean, yeah, yeah. So let's think of the team we could have had that year oh, if everything came together. <laughs> yeah, I, I have often thought about, uh, you know, you know, but the school is so much more equipped now mm-hmm. to help those kids, you know, like, Cause I have thought back a lot to some of them, especially like a Kevin Coleman and, uh, and maybe even Spielar to a point um, and definitely show um, where I think with some of the tools we have now, I could have helped them a lot better. I think, uh, and I think they just needed a little bit more of uh, a little bit more structure around them. Um, and and they, it's, it's not that they weren't smart, but if we just knew that they were showing up at class, I think they would have been successful. You well, know? you're 14 years in now. You got a lot more experience. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. definitely. And, uh, you know, and, and the other thing that I reminded um, everybody was that when you first came on, you know, had you even bowled on a sports shot yet? Uh, probably not. I mean, we played up 10 and threw it harder if uh, the lanes got tough at Crown Point. And remember, I didn't start bowling until freshman year of high school. And that's because I said, screw this to basketball, because like four people puked the first day of tryouts at high school. So <laughs> I was like, ah. you know, then my friends, you know, they were all bowlers. They're like, hey, you know, come over to Super Bowl and Crown Point and we'll give you a ball each and try it out. And you know, after two years of sucking at high school, then I finally did get a lot better. And then those guys were getting mad at me because I was beating them then. But it was mainly due to them making me go bowl every day with them. So, you know, just like in college, I mean, freshman year for most of us was uh, – we had three practices then. I don't know what you have now, but we practiced Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, three hours pretty much. But all of us would bowl uh, like a league Wednesday night, the king of the hill Wednesday night, the king of the hill Friday night, the king of the hill Sunday night. So, you know, talk about overloading and getting all the bowling in you can. And then we had the practice card. So we bowled yeah. seven days a week, eight times a week, pretty much. So, yeah. you know, we all had that passion for the game because it wasn't just me. It was at least probably 10 of us bowling seven days a week, if not more. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, that helped no, us get, get going. No, definitely. Um, I, I think, um, you know, I don't really remember having the conversation with you like I did with Grinder in regards to Captain C. What do you remember about being a captain? I mean, you know, I don't think me, I don't think uh, I so much took over that as much as we relied on Grinder for that just because he was so much older than us. But I mean, I, I would say at being, you know, 19 to 22 hours more mature for a 19 to 22 year old. Um, but I mean, really everybody stayed in line. I mean, you pretty much know that over the years, you know, there was nobody really, you know, we had our, our room of, of four and the core room and, you know, the other four on trips would, you know, follow along with us. And, you know, we never did stupid stuff to say, put the program at risk, like maybe other programs would down the road. But, um, I'd say Griner was the overall 100% captain. And then, you know, I was back up there for him. Well, and I think what I, you know, and that, I think that's kind of a little bit how I remember, but I really do remember Ryan as the example captain, because I, I think he was just a, such a embodiment of, of being on time, being efficient with his time, being great at his academics, working hard on his game, and, and really showing what effort looked like, um, you know. So, I mean, obviously, as far as the physical side of bowling, um, you know, Grinders just, um, you know, I mean, Grinder was good when I got him, but he really <laughs> did work the right way on his game and became so much better. I mean, his game was so good when he left. I mean, yeah. it was just, it just fundamentally – 
fundamentally perfect. And what he created was just so unique. It was such, such an efficiency and, um, well, just like Sammy, they could go after some success on the PBA tour if they really would have tried. So, yeah, yeah. You know, I, w- I would have uh, one out of 40 tournaments probably had a chance of doing something. They would have had it half the time. So, yeah, no, definitely. And, and that's what was really good about uh, Sammy and Grinder. Their games were both really good, but both different. And mm-hmm. so when Grinder tend to roll the ball heavier, um, which would mean that his ball would start up a little bit earlier. And Sammy was much more of an angled role that uh, got down the lane better. Um, so it was really, it was really a great compliment to be able to interchange the two of them as anchor. Um, but I think, I think you had a couple moments at anchor, didn't you? Yeah, a little bit, not uh, yeah. a whole lot. I, I'd almost say more Baker than anything, but yeah. I feel like I, you know, when we were bowling more as a team, it was, more apt to, to how I like the bowl just because, you know, I wasn't bowling the whole game. You know me, I'd have, uh, I'd have those couple shots that just kind of screw up that whole game. But, you know, when it came to Baker's just, I don't know, came alive more, especially, especially at sectionals. I mean, I, I think we bowled as a team better than most teams too. And then, yeah. you know, let's say the Hoinkies or whatever, when we actually would say win the tournament, as long as we didn't have Wichita around, we were uh, pretty good at possibly <laughs> getting first, but with them around, you know, it was tough. But I'm happy you guys broke through so much a couple of years ago then winning tier ones and stuff. You know, the yeah. Mitchell Kadix and, you know, David Sids and Kubas. It's it's crazy how many people you've brought in from across the country. And, heck, now you got uh, Kevin McCune there. And I just bowled with him a month or two ago. And it's like, you know, it's tournament scene, we were, isn't it? <laughs> the tur- tournament we were bowling, I don't know, somehow – I thought he was going to beat me by like 300 for 12 games. And that day he did, but then I came back two weeks later and he only ended up beating me by like 30 for it so far. So (laughs) he only throws it five mile an hour faster and double the reps, but (laughs) I I managed to almost track him down, but yeah, he's got ridiculous, uh, ridiculous game. And what was he? He was just a freshman, right? Well, he's technically a junior in school. He's a freshman in bowling. He did two years at PNW. I'm certainly trying to talk him into going after his masters. Yeah, and, uh, for sure. Um, That's so, right. He uh, just turned 21, I think I saw, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was also uh, – he, he's arguably the best hitter on the baseball team. Too. Yeah, I was going to so, say, uh, I didn't think he gave up his baseball. That, so. though, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it was uh, definitely – in you know, in his case, he didn't get postseason really this year. He did uh, – he did get a bad break though on the postseason awards because he didn't get first team All American, got second team, and I know I know why some people viewed the stats that way, but they viewed it wrong. I mean, he was fourth in the country in average, and he had ten more games than the majority of players. I mean, and and that's the stat that they really should have uh, focused on more. But they they look at average diff so much now. And, uh, you know, and I won't go into that tangent. But uh, <laughs> I, I feel so bad, though, for you guys losing sectionals and nationals. I mean, I, I can't even imagine, you know, missing yeah. that in those four years that we had. It just – that's crazy. It's, yeah, I mean, because, I, I mean, you know, the experiences that these guys get to have in postseason, when people talk about, well, you had the full regular season, but it's like – it's like working for a marathon and not getting to run it. I mean, you know, it's just, it's, it's an emptiness that, you know, and I fought for the kids. I was the first coach sending messages, trying to get the coaches association to do something. Um, I, I, I still firmly believe that if at this point in the year, we could have come up with a way to do productive testing that we could have took the top 16 teams uh, made sure they were all tested and put them in a bowling center to compete. You know, even if we did away with sectionals, um, you know, I, I was trying all kinds of things to, uh, um, because we don't need parents in there. We needed coaches and players and live stream it. And, uh, and it still could have been a great event. And, um, but yeah, I, I, I fought, I fought to get their eligibility back and everything. And unfortunately I see both yeah. sides. <laughs> You know, but uh, 90% of the season. Yeah, I, I tend to err on the side of the student athlete. Um, I thought I saw more win win wins there. And, and actually, uh, one of the things I'm trying to get started for next year is a student advisory council with our coaches association. 
we won't have a, they won't have voting privileges, but I am going to try to get, at least get them a voice in the conversation. Um, because I think uh, coaches need to hear their voices more. You know, I think, uh, I think Ryan would tell you um, that I would definitely hear their voice, you know, and uh, you know, that doesn't mean that uh, final decision wasn't mine. And, uh, but uh, you know, um, I think the players now are so much more adept at the game because the coaching is so much better and has been so much better. You know, like Ryan said, he started as a freshman in high school and probably really didn't know what he was doing for those first couple of years. And mm -hmm. I think you had a halfway decent coach though, didn't you? Because was it Rolls dad or? Well, he, he was coach for a little bit, but uh, I mean, Adam, Adam Davis was the coach for most of it. And I mean, he pretty much, still bowls the same way he does now, just, yeah. you know, up 10, maybe he moves into 12 and throws yeah. it harder. But, I mean, you know, shooting spares, yeah, we definitely practiced that a lot. So that's where the, the spare game definitely started for me. But, I mean, heck, we bowled at Super Bowl and the, all, the, all the bowling alleys with, you know, very bad wood lanes that, hey, you play the same mm -hmm. part of the lane no matter what, and, you know. But yeah. it, was, it was fun then, and that's what got me hooked to bowling. So. I mean, there's nothing like college bowling or high school bowling. I mean, you can't yeah. you can't reenact that in in adult bowling. Pretty much, it just there's nothing like it. So nationals is nowhere near it. I mean, you know, maybe if you get a really good team and you're chasing something down, it gets fun. But it's still just nothing like what we got to experience. That's for sure. So. Well, and you know, speaking of that, because I will say that the year we got to 11th at nationals and team event. Um, it just so happened I had Davidson and Kadick that year. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was fun. <laughs> that was uh, yeah. Yeah, it definitely. What did you think, um, what did you learn or what did you take away from college athletics? What, what made what college athletics that you do now? Um, how did it affect your life? What did you learn from it? That kind of thing. I had a little hard time hearing you, but I think I, I got yeah. most of it uh, out of there. But I, I mean, you know, teamwork with, you know, just the, the people at my work now, but the work I do, you know, I'm mainly selling cars, but I do do some interaction with other dealerships, but competitiveness from bowling is still instilled in me in sales today. You know, I just like in bowling, I wanted to be, you know, number one competitive and, and do my job correctly. Then I still want to do that now in, in the job I have. So, you know, I, I've followed that and, you know, it's, the accountability of going to, to school every day, getting your work in. I, <laughs> I've probably been late twice in 11 years of my job. And, you know, I, I show up and, and do it every day, just like I did in college bowling, you know, and I do the, the little things, right. Like say making spares, then you can ask, uh, you know, unfortunately Christensen sold and we are now a different company, but you know, the Christensen's just like kind of my college, you know, gave me every avenue for success. So, you know, they, they would tell you the same thing that, you know, I showed up, did all the little things they asked, and, you know, then they took care of me in the end too, just like how you met college. But now we are a different company, but uh, we're uh, on track to be uh, just as good as we were uh, as the Christiansons. But, heck, the Christiansons really were nice to me when we started because I pretty much that senior year said, uh, I'm going to start making money too while going to school, and I was selling cars then. And that was kind of part of the reason I was like, well, if I'm not in the top eight and I know I'm not going to be a, a great bowler, well, I guess I can just, you know, go try to make some money now too. But then when I was on the team and having to go to tournaments every weekend, Christensen was the nicest dealership they could ever be and say, oh yeah, sure. Take every weekend off pretty much and go bowling, which, you know, most dealerships that's, that's never going to happen. So I'm very grateful for what, the school did and for what my work did to let that happen because it shouldn't have really well and I I've, I've used Ryan as an example I can't tell you how many times over the years he doesn't know that but I have and uh you know because when kids ask me if they can work part-time I'm like you can work full-time if you're Ryan Alberson I said uh but I'm you, just no you, <laughs> you know it's it's uh you better be one unique person because uh, Ryan probably managed to put in 30 plus hours a week his senior year and was probably the top two or three salesperson there. And 
right now you're what top Probably. 10 in, in Chicago land you know yep. yeah every year here or there I sneak in there so so you know I mean that's that's uh that's getting up there you know and uh so and I, and I go oh no by the way he still had an over a three eight GPA and uh and made you know made the first team all the time and you know so I said it can be done I said but you'll be an exceptional person if you can do it and uh you know, and I think what Ryan doesn't give himself enough credit for is that, you know, yes, Christensen was really good to him. And yes, you know, I was a little bit flexible with him in moments, but he was also a great communicator. You know, he was also, he also did the things that us adults wanted, you know, our young people to do, you know, and, and most, um, most leaders uh, appreciate somebody that can tell them what's going on and appreciate someone that holds themselves accountable. And you really don't have problems with people like that. And, and that's where Ryan was, you know, and that's where, that's where his maturity was a step ahead of some of the others. And luckily if I did get caught by a train coming to Olympia from Highland, I might still beat you by a minute or two. Yeah, to that, practice, is true. So. that is true. So, <laughs> I was definitely, I'm definitely lenient when it comes to, because I'm coming from Griffith and, uh, and back in those days, I lived on the, on the uh, south side of the tracks in Griffith. And uh, Wendy, you might not know this, but there's seven sets of tracks there that I got to get across. And Griffith is known as the town that came to the tracks. And uh, uh, that, that, uh, those train tracks are so prevalent that almost every day you'll find somebody out there to take pictures of trains because, uh, Little did I know there are so many train aficionados around the country. I think I waited 30 minutes to get through there a week or two ago. It was pretty ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. so I, uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, hey, Ryan, why don't you, uh, will you share, a, share your uh, favorite memory about that, that, that trip to nationals, whether it was on the lanes, off the lanes, and then, you know, give a, give a word of advice to, uh, to the future wave, you know. Um, you know, the, the main thing I remember is us in the final game against Lindenwood and finally sealing it that we would go on national television, like people crying, all of us crying. I might even cry right now, but like, I remember my mom just bawling her eyes out the locks. I mean, you know, all of us teammates crying cause we put in four years of endless work to do it. And then we made TV and the TV didn't end up as good as we wanted it, obviously, <laughs> but you know, if. You had to do it all over again, definitely uh, as a result for four years, that's uh, pretty darn good. And But that that's definitely a lasting memory, just unbelievable happiness from everybody. I mean, my aunt came. She'd never came to a bowling tournament probably before that, and she was crying. She said she had, like, the most fun she'd ever seen watching a sporting event that week. And she don't bowl, so, you know, it was, it was definitely an amazing time, so – yeah, I think, uh, you know, uh, and Andy knows this. He's heard me say this, but Wendy, you've never heard this. Um, people are blown away when they see really high-quality match play um, in college bowling. Um, they are so many people that have come and watched it for the first time. Um, just they're like, I had no idea bowling could be like this. Um, because it's – if you think about – how intimate it is when you're right up on the lane with the team you're competing against. I mean, you're close enough to shove each other in the shoulder if you want to. And, mm -hmm. and at times guys run, run shots out into the other team's lanes, even though we're technically not supposed to, but uh, Tammy's definitely been known to do that <laughs> a couple times. And uh, it's just, uh, it's a unique experience and the energy is off the charts in moments like that. And uh yeah, it, it can be a it can be an amazing fan experience. So, <clears throat> Ryan, what's a little advice that you'd give a you give a future bowler here? Uh, <laughs> make your spares, <laughs> <Just> <laughs> practice them. That, that's what gets Mike the the maddest, I guess. But uh, I mean, you know, the the schoolwork. It's you know, you just have to do it. I mean, that's show up to class and do the schoolwork. And in college, the the teachers compared to high school have a lot more leeway with you as long as you're there and you communicate and you do your schoolwork and turn it in. I mean, that's what I saw is the people who struggle just didn't show up. So, you know, you, you do that and you come to practice and you put your effort forward. I mean, you're going to be successful. 
you know, you're going to be to the point that you're going to get as much out of your game as you can possible. And especially with, with Mike's coaching. And like you said, he's 14 years experience now coaching college players. So, you know, you probably can't find someone with more experience than that now. So, you know, that's why he's getting people from all over the country. And, you know, the team has been successful for 14 straight years and no end in sight there. That's for sure. Well, and, uh, um, I think that team, that first year, I think just about everybody was within an hour away. Oh, yeah. I Lockwood would have been the furthest. That, you know, yeah. I don't think – Like Planet uh, and Shoal. Yeah. Um, so that that's another thing that was a little bit unique about that team compared to how much more culture meshing we have to do now. Um, I mean, I, I literally have kids right now. Uh, one from San, kids from San Francisco and kids from Jersey Shore. I mean, they literally couldn't be farther apart in the country from yeah, each other. Yeah. And uh, so I think that's another thing that made, you know, Ryan grew up competing against some of these kids and now his teammates with them. And, you know, because you and Danny bowled against each other some, right? And yeah, and then, I mean, uh, the, the Justin Hausers, the Mike Spielars, I mean, we all yeah. bowled against each other. We were, we were yeah. just down at uh, the marathon – and Svilar was there. Kevin McCune was there. We had – your son was there. We had Ryan mm -hmm. McCoy. I mean, we're like, oh, let's yeah. just put us on uh, threesome pairs and bowl uh, high school teams against each other. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, we, we had yeah. a, lot of, a lot of talent in this area, that's for sure, that, uh, you know, went into making that first year or two teams so good. But now you're, you're picking out the ones that, just like Wichita used to, hey – you know, Ronnie Sparks Jr., you know, an All-American before he gets there, you yeah. know, Jake Peters. So you, you got a little more advantage now when it comes to that. You're not just pulling from a, an hour radius, so. No, definitely, definitely. Uh, it's – it's uh, college bowling is very different now. There's uh, double the number of teams out there now compared to what there was back in his day. And recruiting is the, – the whole sport's a different animal. Recruiting is a different animal. Definitely. Uh, um, but, you know, the other thing that was unique, too, um, back in Ryan's day is that uh, uh, the the financial aid system was a little bit different as well. And, you know, and Andy, I, I don't know if it's, uh, you know, I know I've gone back and forth on how I look at it. You know, it's like I know on some level we wanted some of the things that we have right now, but there are definitely times that I look back at how the financial aid was packaged when Ryan was there and I'm like, going, hmm, in some ways that was easier, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, I think definitely you, you've gotten some of the things you've always wanted to try to build your program, but uh -huh. I think that, you know, it puts a lot of pressure on you as a coach and a program to, to balance things the correct way. Yeah. And yeah. I think the whole system might've just been a little bit easier, just uh, this is what it is and we'll go forward, yep. you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, we won't speak of the old system. It might make some people jealous watching the video. So <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you that know, guys, was when, Sports was just starting really at Calumet yeah. College, so, you know, yeah. I know you guys are trying to get the programs going, so. Yeah. Yeah. Do, you guys, no, no. You guys, uh, do you guys remember that, you know, being in El Paso and landing, you know, and, and not having to drive a van really anywhere? I mean, do you guys remember being how close to the stadium and stuff and, and, and you know, some of the things? Ryan, do you, do you remember us going to the, uh, to the border right there at the river? Oh, maybe? yeah, walking the market and yes. buying dollar sunglasses that broke when you put them on your face pretty much. Yes. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> You remember uh, running into the border patrol agent, and we're talking about where we're from. She's like, "Oh yeah, my parents lived right down the street from Kelly College." You know, <laughs> <up>. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's a small world, but yeah, it's like crazy. Oh, hey, there's Mexico over there, and you know, then we walk a block north, and okay, now we're back at our you know, hotel we're staying at. And we walk two blocks, and we're at the bowling alley. It was definitely a, a neat experience. We when we bowled, we left our stuff there. But we'd walk, we'd go to Burger King for breakfast, and then we'd go over to the convention center for bowling. It's like, how yeah. awesome was that? Yeah, it was – yeah, I, I just remember not having any idea how close to war as we were that year when yeah. we first found out where we were going and everything. And I just – I had never – you know, I, I was I was married to a Mexican, so uh, she quickly educated me on Juarez, and I was like, holy smokes. Uh, because the other thing was we had 24-hour security at our hotel. I don't know if you remember that as well. Well, they, they said that you could possibly uh, 
hear like gunshots across the border possibly yeah. or something. So. so yeah, it was uh it was I was I was a little concerned at first, but it turned out, I mean, no there were no incidents. It was a great experience. Having that market uh basically right outside the door, I thought was really cool, you know, and uh I think uh I think everybody came back with souvenirs from that trip. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how about how about that Italian restaurant Randy found somewhere? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Absolutely yeah. amazing. Do you guys yeah. think I've an Italian restaurant that, that was good that good since? That's for sure. Yeah. So that's the experience and unfortunately the, the kids this year missed out on, but hopefully they get to next year. So yeah. yeah. Do you remember Ryan coming out of that Italian restaurant and Derek Bone hiding under the van? Oh <laughs> yeah. Ran, Ran, Randy Bane is trying to get in the van and he grabs his ankle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, but yeah, yeah. Well, and you know, and in the of previous people, video, in, in the previous video, we talked about Bone most likely to be the one to get in trouble. Yeah. So, hey, oh yeah, know, the he one still thing, is. <laughs> the one thing you guys didn't talk about that I, I vividly remember from being on this trip and and going to nationals before and after. And Mike, correct me if I don't have the correct language on this, but we followed the women's uh, tour, and yep. so it was in the stadium you know, on the, the women's professional tour lanes, correct? Um, um, and that was a we, different, you know. We it, followed it was the women, that year. No, we followed the women's open. Okay. Yeah. Which is like uh, like our USBC open, our national event for amateurs. So we followed, we followed where all the women would go for their national event. Right. And that's but, how we were able to be in a stadium. I was going to say, but the okay. stadium was very unique that year. I mean, I don't remember yeah. being in a stadium again you know, after that, that was an unbelievable experience. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we have been in some stadiums. Um, the year Nico was in singles. That was a real nice stadium. Um, I'd have to go back through the inventory, but, uh, but that was, that was the only year that I can remember being, on, being on ESPN. I think that's something else that made that year so unique. And, you know, obviously having you there was, was huge for me to handle everything. Cause, uh, Ryan, did you go through a TV interview? No, it was uh, Sammy and uh, Grinder that did Sammy the TV Grindr. interviews. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that that was a that was a very interesting experience. You know, I was the only SID at Nationals, mm -hmm. um, except for some grad assistant. I think I think they were attached to Pikeville, and you guys probably remember a girl named like Kayla Bandy. Um, yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. and he and that grad assistant kept coming up to me during the thing. and was like, I'm supposed to interview her. What should I ask? And he kept asking yeah. me for advice, and I'm like. I don't know, go down the lanes and do your job. I have a team to worry about. <laughs> and luckily enough, I was focused on you guys. But yeah, yeah I mean, doing, doing that stuff with ESPN, I mean, you guys, you guys, you know, you guys hit that mark to, to be on TV. And I remember the whirlwind that afternoon, like we need bios, we need headshots, we need quotes, we need information, background, parents' names. I mean, it was like a slew. And I can imagine some of those other coaches having to deal with that instead of focusing on the team. You know, you guys yeah. get to be a team doing yeah. stuff. Oh, it, it was, it, it made the experience for me so much better. I mean, because everything media, I'm just like, you talk to Andy. It was like, it was so nice. It was, so, I'll never forget it because. You know, they'd often come to me first and I'd be like, you need to talk to Andy. <laughs> and you know, so, you yeah. know, you know, Mike, but Mike, you know, what made it really easy with these guys is these guys were, you know, as much as, as much as we laughed at some of the immature stuff that was happening in the background as a team, which is every team, you know, don't get me yeah. wrong. Yeah. You know, these guys were really mature. I didn't have to coach them much to be on video and interviews. You know, they understood the concept of talking about the team first and things like that. And, you know, it made it so much smoother that they, you know, they understood the game inside out. So when they were asked questions, they just, they could answer it and they could answer it, you know, you know, very maturely. Yeah. I think that, uh, you know, and again, this goes back to uh, how so many of them were from the same part of the country. Um, I think it was easier to, for them to bond as a team because of that. Um, uh, I think bowling in general in our area was a little bit different back then. Um, and because like Ryan said, you know, they were, they were bowling everywhere all the time. And, um, so I just think there was, there was just so much more cohesiveness, um, that I think we all strive for that with teams of today, but, uh, but there's only so much you can do, you know, in that area, you know, part of it is just innate. And, um, so I think that's something that they just had and, and, you know, they, because they competed in their first year that way, 
been experiencing it, they just kept learning and learning and learning. And by that year, you know, it was, it was just perfect because the only thing that makes it more perfect is them winning, of course. And, um, <laughs> but just knowing that they went through that process together to get to the pinnacle of the sport in arguably the best venue of all of the years I've been around it. And then, you know, obviously getting an opportunity on ESPN. I mean, it just, there was just so, so much good there. So much. So, so I, I know that we need to wrap up here in the next few minutes. So I'll kind of, I'll kind of get to the very end, the culmination of everything. Um, and I, and I feel like, you know, you know, for me, I, I, I have a, I have a, I have a bond with these guys a little bit through the time, you know, being there on the road with them a little bit. And, you know, I'm very thankful they accepted me as part of the team because I'm a, I'm a firm believer outside of parents in the, in the direct immediate people there, they pushed everybody kind of outside so they could focus on what they were trying to accomplish, especially in that final year. And so I feel, you know, very, very humbled and, and very thankful that they let me into that circle with them. But, you know, the part I'm getting at is, is that ring ceremony, you know, they're, yeah. you know, everybody having a ring and I, and I have a ring with them, you know what I mean? And so that's where I find that little bit of bond that, you know, I'm, I have one of those special items, but you know, what, what is that, you know, before we wrap up here, what is, what does that ring mean to you guys, you know, looking back? Well, I'll let you go first, Ryan. I was say, I can go grab it real quick. I know where it's at. <laughs> um, I mean, that was, that was an amazing thing that the school did and to, to get recognized like that was, was pretty awesome. You know, we all wish it was the, the first place one, but to finish in second and, you know, the, the recognition or the way to say of, hey, we beat Purdue, IU, you know, all these schools that have 40, 50,000 people and, you know, have people from all over the country, especially back then, because we really still only had our people from Indiana, Illinois in that senior year even was just you know, amazing recognition and something to always remember by because I, I have it right there with my 300 and 800 ring that I got first. So, you know, the, those accomplishments, you see those little things every once in a while, and it's it's very nice to have. And I'll let Mike answer, but I'll go get the, the ring real quick so I can put it on screen there for a second. All so. right. um, I think that uh, I think the ring is a little bit different for me. Um, because, well, first of all, Andy did such a phenomenal job of taking a million pictures. So then when we got back, um, they had the study buddy full of pictures. Uh, that's like the first thing that sticks out at me. And, and, you know, the, the school did such a great job of being willing to get those rings for a runner up finish. And, uh, and then I think where the ring has taking on even more significance is that Coach Vanya, when he moved over to the girls' side, he donated his ring back to the program, did a picture collage of, uh, um, of uh, many of those pictures. And to this day, we have that bowling ball picture collage with the ring in the middle of it that has been a recruiting piece for me for years. And let me just tell you, when you have that pic, that ball collage with those pictures all wrapped around it from that national uh, day, and uh, excuse me, um, uh, Ryan, do you have that ring there? Only Mike uh, with two phones. Yeah. <laughs> um, but when you have that ring, um, it, you know, I'll be at a junior gold event of four thousand kids. It is. And let me just tell you that those kids will stop and look stop and look and I get to tell the story of that ring so many times over and over and over and one of the things that I get to highlight is that we may not have won the national championship that year but our school still went out and got our guys these runner-up uh, championship rings and uh, you know and that kind of uh, that's significant that's um, you know that's that's not something that I think a lot of schools would do so I think that, that makes a huge difference. So. Yeah. And Mike, one, one thing that you, uh, that we did, not all the time, I have a most improved bowler award from the school slash the team and everybody signed that uh, pretty much document or whatever you want to say it is, but I still have that hanging up and can go look at that and see all the signatures. So, if that's a tradition you want to start or keep going, uh, it's definitely a nice thing to have. 
And uh, one thing that I'll always have, just to be able to look back to, oh, man, look at that name signed on there. I can't remember him. I haven't thought about him in 10 years, you know, so. That's cool. No, that's a good reminder for me that uh, I think sometimes when you've been doing it as long as I have, uh, you definitely need to uh, uh, get refocused on some of the sentimentality of these moments. So I think that's a good reminder for me. I appreciate that. So guys here, as, as, we, as, as, as we end, I just want to say thanks. You know, it was, it was a great experience, great being a part of it. And, you know, Mike, I've been there with you almost since day one. So I, I always feel connected to the program, but you know, it's, it's a special time for me and I, I tell the stories and, and so for me to you guys, thank you. Thank you, Andy. It was a pleasure always having you around too. I appreciate that. No, absolutely. Um, no doubt. About